Welcome back to Wayne TV. I'm Joel Gilly. We have our very good friend, Miss Sherry Archibald, with us today to talk United Way. Sherry, we missed last month, uh, but we're back and better than ever. That's and, right. And uh, you are still just as busy as always, right? Well, thank you, Joel. It has been good. It's good to be back in the studio, too. But we do have a lot going on. A lot, you know, this the spring is just feeling like, okay, lots of great things are yeah. happening. Um, so, of course, next Friday is our golf tournament. So we're really busy planning on that. Yeah. Uh, it's just a great time to get together. I was talking about it with a colleague the other day. And while, you know, it's a no-brainer, go out and enjoy yourself. You're supporting a, a great organization and have a good day at golf. But it's still a big ask sometimes, you know, when businesses are so busy trying to get things done in their yeah. office. So I just appreciate it. But we've got, you know, 20-plus teams together that will be out on the course with on the 22nd and so um, that's going to be a lot of fun we do this every year it's, it's a good friend raiser and yep. just making sure that folks are appreciated and that we get to enjoy a little time with them you gonna get to play no i'm gonna be <laughs> at i guess it's hole number nine i think um i love sitting there and just being able to see all of the teams come yeah. through and getting a picture of them and it's just a great opportunity for me to say thank you do you play golf and you don't want to see me play golf. okay okay <laughs> I'm kind of the same. I've played with my honey, you know, a couple of times early on because he used to play a lot before the kids. And when the kids were coming along, it's such a time investment. Yeah, it's it hard. is. So he has stopped. He's really just started picking it up again. Yeah. I tried then when we were first, you know, newly married 30 years ago. And it wasn't pretty. So yeah. <laughs> I love to drive the golf cart. That's, that's how I am. That's all. It's the only <laughs> fun part about it. I can drive all over. It's yeah. lots of fun. But for the golf tournament, I enjoy being there to take pictures. My thing was is whenever I do an activity like that, it's I want it to be a stress reliever for me. Yeah. But my stress relief is just whacking the crap out of the ball. And when I took lessons, they were like, it's not about just whacking the crap out of it. It's not about it. how hard you It's not did. about I played hockey growing up. Yeah. And so I think it was the translation between those two yeah. didn't quite work out for or me. Or you want to say, you don't know how my day was today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is really good for me. Well, that's fun, though. That's uh, it, it always is a big a big time. Yeah, so. it is. So we've got that. Next week, we also have a big week. So um, the week of, I guess it's always the third week. It's National Volunteer Appreciation Week. And so um, you guys have just a few of those. We have a few of those wonderful volunteers, but not just United Way. Um, I, I know for at least as long as I've been there, three years, we have been that connection to the governor's office to be able to um, offer an opportunity to um, nominate folks who are volunteering uh, and just really be able to give them some accolades from the state level. Yeah. And so through Volunteer NC, um, the, the governor's office offers just a, a pin and a certificate and a big thank you from the governor's office. So three years ago, we did um, expedite that. I hadn't been with the organization very long, so we were able to do that, only had a few nominations. And then of course the last two years were COVID. So while we had a few nominations, it was not like what we're hoping yeah. to see in the future. This year we certainly had more and we have a committee that selects that goes through because I was we, wondering about that. Yeah, so we have a committee that um, reviews all the applications so that they can make recommendations to send. Um, we sent eight up to the governor's office okay. and so all eight of them um, are going to be receiving um, a state recognition and um, they're going to receive a pen and certificate. So that's going to be acknowledged next week. But what I want to do and what I feel like we're going to be moving into is um, I think that these nominations are going to come in a lot stronger as the years, um, as we have the opportunity to grow it. Yeah. So what I'm hoping for next year as we're seeing how this is, and of course because of the borderline COVID restrictions that we were still experiencing. We couldn't we couldn't plan on anything yeah. major, but I'm hopeful that next year we're gonna be able to have a banquet or reception for all of the nominees, you know, so I hope to see 50 plus coming through yeah. and that we're having an opportunity um, in a central location to have a reception or a thank you for them. And so, and then of course, nominate so many of them to go to the state level too. Yeah. So this year, um, for the week of National Volunteer Appreciation on Monday, um, for the city council's meeting, we'll, we'll have a proclamation. On Tuesday, um, for the commissioner's meeting, we'll have a proclamation and we'll um, be able to share a certificate to all the nominations that came in uh, as an opportunity to say thank you for what you do for Wayne County. Yeah. So we'll do that on Tuesday at, we're really excited to be able to do that with the commissioner's meeting, so we'll do that Tuesday morning. And then on Saturday at the Pickle Festival, we will definitely have an opportunity to recognize all of those eight that are receiving uh, the governor's um, accolades as yeah. well. So we're doing that on the main stage at the Pickle Festival, nice. trying to find, you know, really make sure that we're recognizing um, all of the rec all of the uh, nominees that came in, and then specifically those eight as well. And so moving forward, like I said, I hope that that's going to continue to grow and grow into something 
significant and large yeah. in the future. So, and I know this is far out because we're just about to do this, but how do people nominate? How, is that so we would we were um, we had it posted everywhere. We had a um, a press release about it, but we also had it on all of our social media, and we specifically sent it out to all of our nonprofits, not just the ones that are funded through United Way, but all nonprofits yeah. in the community to say, hey, this is an opportunity. You're probably surviving on your volunteers. Nominate some of those volunteers. It's a one-page application, um, and then that application is shared with our committee so that they can just, you know, determine. Um, which ones would go on and it's yeah. hard because they're all doing great work. That's what work. I was wondering how y'all picked them. <laughs> it's difficult. I'm glad I'm not making that decision. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's hard work but it's really a great opportunity for us to recognize specifically eight. Now I'll say also out of the eight that are being recognized there's also was the opportunity whatever you're sending to the governor's office you can recommend one of those to be what's called the medallion award. Okay. Only one in 20 of those in the state are recognized and Wayne County is receiving one of those. Oh wow. So we're very excited about that too. Now, so I think that's really cool and I've, I've seen of course over the years these um, awards is that something that all United Ways do? Like, how does no, that work? Um, like, that's the, you did know, you was, just call the governor's office or I don't, something? I don't really know how that happened and how United Way started funneling that. And maybe it was or was not before I came. I've only you know been there yeah. three years. Now, I remember back um, probably 15 years ago, Volunteer RSVP. Do you remember that organization? Yeah, yeah. They oversaw this process, okay. which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and so they had a big banquet, you may remember. I also, maybe even a little longer, um, Cherry and O'Berry offered a big opportunity for because they oversaw this process yep. and they had a big banquet for all of the nominees. What a great opportunity. Yeah. That's what I want to get back to. Um, so we're not going to be doing anything that hasn't already been, been done in our yeah. county, but I want to bring it back that, you know, our predecessors for this effort have been very strong, done a lot of great work. And I think just maybe in the transition, or loss of volunteer RSVP. We don't have as strong of a recognition yeah. opportunity and I hope that we'll be able to get back to that. That's really cool. It's neat that there's, it's also neat to me that there is a local organization making the recommendation. You know, it's not yeah. It's not some state person sitting in Raleigh yes. that's like, ah, this person, does, you know what I'm saying? Like, you at least have somewhat of a knowledge of what's going on in the local community, so. Yeah, that's it's a great opportunity. So that's for the full week. Yeah. <laughs> um, some other things happening, May, uh, we're real excited about May the 14th is the United States Postal Service mail carrier food drive. Yes, that's right. It's now, already that time again. It's that time again, and we, of course, have missed it for the last few years yep. because of COVID. And so excited to be back. We've been working with our postal service carriers, um, creating a team there. And so we've got about six pantries that are going to be benefiting from cool. this large food drive. Um, that's on the 14th. So folks will probably start seeing postcards and bags in their mailboxes pretty soon in the next week or so. Yeah. And so when you do, I would just ask, you know, and encourage you, stuff them with um, non-perishable uh, cans, food, uh, food items that are cans, boxes, or bags. No glass no items. No glass, I remember That's that. That's right, no <laughs> glass and no expired food. Um, but if they can certainly fill those bags, you know, the, the mail carriers have gotten so many more um, boxes than they used yeah. to have, right? Especially since COVID has yep. really gotten. So they're going to have their hands full because <laughs> yeah. in addition to their usual plates of, of much more than they used to have of boxes to be delivered, now they're going to have, um, you know, the canned good delivery. But what a great cause. So it's cool too. Um, our local mail carriers are awesome. Um, I went in the post office the other day. And it was amazing to me how, you know, you go into a lot of places now that are burnt out from COVID, right? Yeah. They were still super friendly. Yeah. And I was like, man, because you know their <laughs> jobs have just gotten so much harder so, with all the Amazon clicking. Yes. <laughs> It definitely, definitely has. But for it's them. cool that they're still they're still giving back to the community. They are. They're doing, and I think they're just so excited to kind of bring this back um, in a real way that yeah. they've not been able to do in the last few years. Cool. So we've got that coming up too. Um, that's on the 14th. On the 16th, you may have seen. I've kind of done a save the date, but we're finally going to be making it happen. The Family Learning Center finally. is going to open up in the Dudley area. Um, we've talked about this a couple of yeah. times, but. Uh, several years ago, actually before I came to the organization, um, some funding was donated to the United Way, an anonymous donation with the intent of, of finding a specific need to be able to be met in, in the county. And so a group was put together to really try to identify that and they determined that you know with the with the little resources that are in the Dudley area we need to be able to service that community. Mm -hmm. 
and a big part of that was around really wanting to gain the reading proficiency levels of those third graders. They knew we can't do that at third grade, we've got to start early. And so what um, was determined was we would build a family learning center that would allow wraparound services for families in that community so they have a place to go, um, not just for um, early Head Start and child care, but also for if you're having transportation needs or food insecurities, uh, an, an individual or a business or organization that can kind of help um, case manage and get yeah. you to the place that you need to be. Well, that's exactly what Wages does for Early Head Start. So it was a great partnership for us. Um, and so we're really glad to be able to partner with them and they are gonna be taking over this facility and making sure that they're serving the families there. They're already serving the families now, but those families have had to drive to Mount Olive yeah. um, to be served and now it's gonna be right in their own um, community. Awesome. So May the 16th, we are gonna have a dedication and uh, an open house for the Stephen and Susan Parr Family Learning Center. Um, and it's going to be at four o'clock, and so working really hard to get all of the information out on that. But yeah. it's going to happen. It is. COVID <laughs> slowed it down a little bit, of it course. It did, but and you know we had other challenges just finding the right spot. And so we had one spot that we were ready to go when it was ready when I started, but then we had some some difficulties with it. And knowing that we needed to be there, we we couldn't just say, well, there we've got somewhere in Goldsboro. That's yeah. not where the need was the strongest. So yep. took us a little while. Then COVID, yes just kind of back things Slowed up a little it down. bit, but <laughs> we're, we're going to make it happen. So Awesome. A lot of exciting stuff coming yes, up. Yes, a lot of great things. <laughs> and uh, anything else going on? I think that's, that's about it. It's plenty. a few <laughs> weeks. Yes, that's a few weeks. And we're already meeting to start talking about campaigns. I figured that was about to be. Prepare for that, yeah. but um, that'll really kick off in July. But it takes a lot of preempt paperwork and you know, making sure that everything is up to date. So we're working on that. And, you know, we've got two new staff that are just doing great work and yeah. diving in and enjoying it. So really trying to keep them up to date. So awesome. they um, have been blown away of the timeline. <laughs> right. So many things happening. So It's, it's nonstop. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, I tell you, I, we always talk about the United Way and, and all the great things you're doing. We, we were sitting at the office the other week um, and a gentleman walked in and literally was just like, I want to volunteer somewhere. What do I do? And we said, you know, the United Way is a be is the best place to start yeah. uh, well, because good. you guys literally connect people with volunteer opportunities. You represent these nonprofits. You help fund these nonprofits, uh, and it really just is a, a one stop shop for nonprofits. Well, thank in the you county. for doing that. And yes, we just encourage folks if you're interested in volunteer opportunities. You know, one more thing that's coming up. This is not too far away from the last event I told you, but. June the 21st is a kind of a national event for United Ways all over the country. It's the Day of Action. Yep. And so on that Day of Action, you know, these volunteers that are coming, we don't want them to think they only have to volunteer one day. There are yeah. lots of opportunities throughout the year. But this is one day where we really um, seek out specific projects that are, they are heavy needs that we can find organizations and businesses that will allow several to come together and make things happen that yeah. are just a significant visual after you're done absolutely and so um we're planning starting to plan on that too to make sure that we have lots of projects for these nonprofits to that they're able to get some things done and yeah. see see a result awesome uh we we say it every time but give the united way of wayne county a like on facebook if there's like one organization that you should probably like <laughs> for staying up on anything in the community it's the united way of wayne county uh, because you guys share so much important information. You literally, it's a one-stop shop. Plus, mm -hmm. you can stay informed on all the uh, important events that the United Way has going on. They do an impressive job on their social media. So head to Facebook and like them on Facebook. You can check them out on the web. You can give their office a call if yes. you have any questions. Uh, but until next time, Sherry, is there anything else you have? <laughs> that covers it. Thank all you right. so much for having me. Thanks for coming in. And we'll see you again next time right here on Wayne TV.